All right. Hey, everybody. So my name is Sharice M. Salem, founder um, of Vintage Soul Productions and also founder and producer of the Quick Quarantine Play Festival. This is honoring Black voices. And very specifically today, we are going to be honoring master collaborator and playwright and a really good friend of mine, Steve Driffin. So let's give him a, a virtual round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Steve, um, for taking the time to meet with me today. I just oh. really want to have, you know, conversation. Let's just talk about how amazing you are and how you have done so much for our community in New Haven as an artist. When I think grassroots, literally, Steve's face would be right next to that word in the dictionary <laughs> because he's a very grassroots person, artist. Um, when it comes to, you know, just working with organizations and helping people, this is who he is. This is his heart. And um, a lot of, I, I think I can just, you know, maybe just speak for myself. A lot of the work that I have created would not have happened had I not run into Steve early on in my career as a theater person. So I, I definitely thank you for, for that. So I want to get into, you know, just talking about you and yeah. like your beginnings with being a playwright. Right. And then being a community person. Right. Um, so if you can just kind of, you know, tell us a little bit, you know, about yourself, like your, where you're from originally and yeah. how you came into writing. Yeah, so it's, it's interesting. It's like one big circle. Like, so I actually, hold on, I thought I turned my thing up. I actually, um, I, I was born in New Haven. But but I was raised in New York. Um, I was only here small, so I didn't even know New Haven or anything like that. I would come up here, you know, see family. But uh, New York was home up until my mother moved south. And then after I went to college down there, I uh, I came back. I came back to Connecticut. So that was that was the beginning of my my journey and uh, well, how I got into community work. So I came up here, it's interesting, I don't even know if I shared this with you as much as we, we, we've talked, I don't know if I shared this. So I came up here like right at the um, New Jack City era, you know, like when it was like heyday of the drug crack epidemic and all that and, and mm -hmm. late 80s, uh, 90s, early, yeah, and uh, wow. And I saw so much was going on and I moved right into Newhallville. Like the first place I moved to was Newhallville and that was the old mud hole and it was bananas, right? And I saw so much, I saw so much uh, just because of the crack epidemic, everything that came stemmed from it, the violence, the crime, the police, all that. And I knew I wanted to talk about it. I knew I wanted to say something about it, but I knew me coming out on the block, like, yo, that wouldn't have worked, right? That would have just, you know, that would have been, a, we wouldn't be talking, right? So, but then I decided to write about it. And that was my first jump because I figured, I didn't even figure it was just, I wanted to say something and I, how could I do it? So I wrote this play called Yo Street and it was done it on the like street. Yo Street? Yo Street, like Yo Street, my street. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, like Yo Street. And it was like, it was a morality play. It was like every man, it was Shakespearean in theme and I had allegorical characters, somebody, brotherhood, commerce, you know, that type thing, community. And, and I created this storyline how the community at once, the one point in life was beautiful and vibrant and how drugs in, infiltrated. And I had this guy, he was a doctor. He was Dr. Uggs, put it together, drugs. Kind of corny back then when I think about it. But, you know, but, but, the, but the person came in and, and just kind of infiltrated the community, you know, really on the low, right? And, and it changed the community. So I, I created that concept and I did it on the streets, right on Orchard Street. And big ups to Bishop Brooks because he was the one who like had vision enough back then to like, all right, I'll help you. He set up a stage outside. They closed the street off, and we did this play. You know, I just got people in the community to do to talk about it, to do it, and wow. from there, that was the trajectory. You know, of of really getting into being about community because I didn't like what I saw, and and yeah. from there, you know, that was my contribution, my kickoff, my launch. Because New Haven, you know, be it as it may, you know, New Haven is a very uh, close-knit community and infiltrators. If you come from the outside, it's hard to kind of get in. So I think I slipped through the cracks. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so yeah. 
Wow. Yeah, so and then you, w- you went on to school for writing or just what? theater in general? Um, you know, believe it or not, I was, I was an English major in undergrad and, um, and, but I always wrote on the side. And, and so also that was the emergence of the black filmmakers. You know, you had the Julie Dash, the Spike Lee, the Ullin brothers, right? And I'm mm-hmm. like, no. Oh. And so I, I first wanted to be a writer. I wanted to write books. I wanted to be an author, yeah. right? And, and, but then the, you know, the, the surgeon of a black film came out and I'm like, wait a minute, people, and to me back then weren't reading as much. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. so I said, all right, let's do it visually. And, but film back then was crazy. Like, it was like, a, you need a billion dollars to make a movie, right? You need to be, <laughs> I had no connections like that. So I'm like, okay, as, as black people, this is what we do, right? We will find a way. And I said, mm-hmm. how, do I, how do I make film? I can't make, I can't afford it one day. And uh, so I took to the stage. Now, I had no theatrical uh background at the time you know it was just like nah i just know what i knew i knew what i wanted to see visually right and and i knew what it would look like so i said well this can't be too hard you know uh and i just started off like that and just the school of hard knocks then i started taking taking writing courses you know and just kind of improving my craft and just really self-learning reading books uh Mm -hmm. buying books going you know that stuff so from there that's where it just it, it went on um, to to uh, yeah to what it is now you know wow. I'm still I'm still learning I'm still I want to be like you you like ah. you create stuff yo you create stuff you know what I'm serious I'm like yo I was, yeah, that's dope you know <laughs> learn together don't we <laughs> yeah. so yeah. that's how that was my start that was my start writing and then you know I wrote screenplays and stuff in hopes of becoming the next black screenwriter on the scene because I was going down to New York too. I was part of the Black Filmmakers Foundation. So with the, um, the Hudlin Brothers used to come out there every now and then. It was really, it was hot, it was good. Wow. Uh, yeah, so that got me into it deeper, you know. That's yeah. Cool. Oh, that's so cool. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, Posthumous? Because that's uh, what it makes me think of because I, I was a part of that, <laughs> that experience and I loved it so much. Oh, well, that was... <laughs> That okay, that was another right. That was another yeah. um, um, concept of like what was going on in the community, right? And, Be, you know, and we literally performed it right there on the street corner. Street. And that and was so <laughs> yeah, yeah. So posthumous. So really, people don't believe it, but posthumous. People don't know this, but posthumous is a biblical story. That's where I got the idea from. I got it out there, so I just urbanized it, right? So, so that's what we do is a lot. If we take something and we just weave into other things. So there, there is the uh, the parable in the Bible that talks about this rich guy who 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 went end up going to hell, and he 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 said, "Hey, look, give me some water. I'm thirsty." And and uh, I think it was Mike, one of the angels said. Oh, no, no, it's too late. It's too late. I'm paraphrasing. They say it like that. (laughs) But it's too late. It's too late. And then he said, well, let me go back and warn my brothers and sisters about, yo, this is real, right? And and, and what struck me was the angels responded, said, even if the prophets, Moses and Elijah came back, they wouldn't listen. And I Mm. thought about that. And I said, and brothers were still killing each other, right? Brothers are still Mm. killing. And I said, what if, and I worked with youth back then. I started working with youth and I lost yeah. a lot of my kids to the streets, right? And I said, what if they could come back? What if they could come back? What would they say? What would we do? And that was the whole, I just urbanized a biblical parable, you know? And, and, and so we did it, we did it like, and, and I think the first time I wrote it, it was a female lead. So there was, the oh, wow. female lead. yeah, it was a female lead. And I think I did it for a church. I think I did it for, I think I did it for Union Temple, and it was like a four-page. It was a skit. It was like a four-page little short piece, and 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 it just kept growing. You know how we just keep going back into our work, and mm-hmm. we just we're never satisfied, right? And we just right. keep trying to develop it and, and see back, you know, see what we can do different. So, and then it just evolved into this bigger thing. And when we, we by the time we went to the streets, man, it just. It was nothing like what was written, man. And, and you, mm. I remember, yeah. And that's how we, I think I saw how you and I met was I found this, I somehow got a flyer or something, I think, about, you had like a brochure. And that's when you were doing oh, the pine, yes. right? That, yes, that, that's, exactly. 
I was like, good thing we were having. <laughs> Such a crazy time, Steve. You have no idea. <laughs> I was going through so much with this transition. I was working at a school. I was working at Davis Street School in New Haven. Okay. And um, I was leaving a religion, a very, very, very strict religion. Uh -huh. uh, I was Jehovah's Witness. Okay. Okay. All right. And at that, yeah, at that time, I was like, okay, I know I'm leaving this religion. I have no friends, no community, no connection to people. The only thing I, you know, I started working that job, but, and that was right. my only connection really to people was the kids. And, yeah, you know, yeah. and that was it, you know? And so I was like, all right, I need another source of income because I'm about to be on my own completely. And this was me first venturing out into New Haven like that. And so I went to every building that was over there by Humphrey Street. Yeah, yep, Jane Street, right. <laughs> That's right. I and remember I that. Yours. I went to um, New Haven, uh, what is it called? New Haven Family Alliance. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> I, I made a little brochure. <laughs> so yeah. And, um, I, you know, I, I, I said, I don't know, you know, who would, want, you know, would want to see my resume, but... I just want to let you know that I am available. I can work part time. I can work full time. Whatever. Yeah. I was going to try to balance both somehow. And um, you got my resume from somebody there. Yep, that's like, right. That's right. I don't have a job for you, but you know, I see you're <laughs> the theater person, and I do theater. So I'm just, you know, thinking we should connect somehow. You know, maybe someday we can connect. And I said, sure. Just you know, keep me in mind. Whatever. Whatever you got going on. So then you had you were working on a play. And you invited me to a rehearsal. I got to eat pizza. I sat back. I watched the <laughs> rehearsal. I was, like, this is fun. I was like, okay, there, here we go, community. And it was like people who were there who weren't even theater people. Right, like, right. Were, you know, actors, but then there were people who were not, which I loved that about you. I was like, wow, he, he really gets it. This is, you know, theater is very cathartic as it is, but he also understands that um, it brings people together, right? So there was that. That was my introduction to you. And then um, then you did Poshmas, and you're like, hey, Reese, you want to hop in the Poshmas? I was like, yes, I want to do that. So then we did yeah. that. And then ever since then, you would connect me with different programs and gigs and things. And so I started to really branch out. And um, you were very instrumental in, in helping me with that. And one of the biggest relationships that I formed after meeting you was with Rafael Ramos. Bergamo's Community yeah, Theater. Bergamo's, yeah. Like, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, you were working with a program, Interact Theater, yep. uh, which was uh, in in um, connection with uh, the connection. The connection, right, right. Yeah. And then, right, right. God, you yeah, know, and so you were like, I can't do this gig, but I think you would be good for it. And you, you know, you always plug me in. So, I did that for a while and um, met Raphael, and then we um, created Hope High Class of 84, put it on stage at Longmore Theater, you know, and it just yeah. and then went on from there, you know? <laughs> but yeah. This is why I think it's so beautiful um, when people care enough about each other, artists care about each other to connect them, you know what I mean? And be like, hey, I got something for you. Hey, I heard about this, you know what I mean? You've always been that person uh, to me, and I do, I try to do the same for you. Yeah, you know, yeah. when I find out about things. And so, yeah. you know, it's um, that I just feel, feel like the world should know this about Steve, <laughs> if you don't <laughs> already. <laughs> but that's, that's what we should do, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what we should do. I mean, because the, let's think about being, being an artist. You would think in the world of art that it would just be some really kumbaya stuff going on. But really, <laughs> it's not, right? And, 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 and you know, you get... Um, I, especially like you know artists of color you know black artists man we it, we it's hard to get in any door any door and and so i think it's important for us to really keep pulling each other along what's that there's this term that i really embraced um it's it's uh it's not swahili it's this african term i can't even forget what tribe but uh ubuntu right mm -hmm. and basically the, the the concept or the belief is that I can't be happy unless you're happy. Mm -hmm. I can't be unless you are. You know what I'm saying? And and I, I've always kind of embraced that um, yeah. because it's like how how dare I go up here 
and my sister's still, my brother's still trying to, and, and I always told that I would connect with people that would do the same, you know, yeah. um, because, and then also, right, I looked at, when I came to New Haven, what drew me to New Haven was, I said, oh, New Haven's got this potential. They got this little low-key vibe that could almost be like a mini New York. And I'm like, okay, fine. You know, you had the culture, you had the restaurants. And I'm like, yo, you got so many different kinds of people. This town is about to pop off, right? That's what I was hoping. And, 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 and then... Um, Real quick, Gail owns everything. <laughs> no, right? So, so I wasn't even up on that one, right? So I was like, okay, all right. Um, I'll wait. I'll give it time. I'll give it time. Um, and, and it just really, and it still does. But then I knew people, I would look at other towns like New York, you know, Jersey, Philly, Boston, right? And I'm like, yo, how come the Philly vibe, how come, you know, cats in New York, they all like connected and they be working together. And I'm like, we need to do the same thing. You know, you do a shoot, you got a video, like, yo, I'm going to be in it. If you need a body, I just, that's how we should be. Right. And, and the show, the show that I really believe that, and and unfortunately that just doesn't always happen. That right. that's real talk. It just doesn't happen. You, we got we got artists right here who just like they siloed out. They they work with who they work with. They you know they're very selective, and maybe that's just that's being selective is just what they are being selective. You know, no yeah. shade, no hate, but I think we could do better. I think we could do better collectively. That's all. We could always do better because you know, and I know I know people who uh, succeeded. Like I like I know people who who from from Connecticut who left and did very well and I'm like no you're not even coming back to open the door for nobody not saying you got to give anybody anything but give access yeah. right that's yes. what we need. we need access we don't need I don't want you to give me a handout I want my talent you know right. our talent should speak for itself our ability mm -hmm. right but, yeah yeah but they don't you know I don't. Yeah. Open the door for me. Just open the door. If I suck, then let me suck. Let me say, nah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> people don't do that here. People don't, people, it's like us three, no more. Us four, no more. It's sad. That's sad. That's real talk. That's sad. And I'm not yeah. about that life. You know? Yeah. You and I were at a meeting somewhere. We always bump into each other, right? So <laughs> we were at a meeting at said place. I'm not going to say the place name, but. I remember you bringing up that very point and I echoed it and I'm like, yeah, every show I have, I can pretty much turn and look and see your face. Every show you have, right. you can pretty much see, see my face. Right, right, right. At every single one of your shows, you're at every single one of my shows. And yeah. I have to, it's, it's like we have to go outside of New Haven to do our work, right? It's our work is celebrated in other places, other places but not here. to the point it's in my work is now in other states and, and and whatnot right but right i can't go next door and just hey y'all you know <laughs> do my piece for whatever reason i don't, I don't know you know it's is. a very strange thing but um i think at the end of the day still sticking together you know and supporting oh. each other's work has always been kind of at the forefront i know for me um and what, what do you think it would take? What do you think people, what do you think it would take for, to create this sort of like renaissance? Wow, that's a good question. Um, I, I think it's, it's gonna take, take artists like you and me just to continue to show that and, and get the other artists who are, to see that they can trust, you know, trust. That's what it's just gonna have to boil. It has to just boil down to trust. And, and, and if you can't do it, like, you know, I, I told some actors over the weekend, I said, you know, and I always say this, if I do a show, if I could do a show, if I can pay you, I'm going to pay you, period. Mm -hmm. You know, right. but if, if I can't, I'm going to be like, yo, just say, this is for the love. You know what I'm saying? This is straight love. Yeah. Being transparent and, from the beginning. Right. And, and, yeah. uh, and most people would like that, but I think we just got to trust each other. I think we got to be able to learn how to collab. And collaboration really means being able, it just necessarily can't be, it's what I want to do. And, 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 you know, nah, sometimes you humble yourself, chill, fall back. You know, right. I always say, listen, this, if I eat, we all eat. You know, right. if you eat, I want to make sure I'm there too, because if this thing blow up, yo, we all eat, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. how I look at it. I'm just always saying, you just don't ever know what's going to pop off. So be about it and, and give your hundred. 
And then also, you know what, Sharice? We gotta we gotta learn how to take good criticism. Mm. We gotta learn. We gotta we gotta learn to take like if I do something that that sucks, I want you to call me up and say, "Yo, bro, this 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 is not cool," or or maybe you need to work yeah. on this. Look at because I mean, we can't call ourselves really loving this and wanting to. We would all would love to do this twenty four seven, right? Right. I, I know I would. I you know, but but if we can't take really good constructive counsel why why make me do suck stuff and tell i don't want nobody telling me something's good and if it's not honestly i'm that thick skin i'm like tell me what didn't work so i can go back and correct it or at least look yeah. at it and make sure right you know but but artists we don't do that you know um <laughs> yeah you know it like a good example this weekend we just did we just did the promise as a virtual promise. right yeah and it went off so well. Like I was scared, right? I was I was scared because I'm like, yo, virtual? How's this gonna because that's kind of corny. You don't got a stage, you don't got yeah. props. Hard. And, and sis, let me tell you how we set it up, it was just like it had people engaged. They it, it worked. And but the only reason I think it worked so well is because I was going online and checking out other webinars. I was looking at mm -hmm. other artists doing doing similar works, and I was watching what didn't work. I was mm. watching. I was watching. Okay, this is what happens. This is what happens. You do that. No, it's better if you do that. So I was literally watching, taking notes. So when mm -hmm. it was time, it was like this flows better, and and yeah. and, it's, and it's no secret of formula, you know. Like and, and you and as a matter of fact, you inspired me, right? You inspired uh, me with the, the play festival. Because that was such an ingenious idea and concept, right? And it was so much fun. And I'm watching these guys and these actors from all over. And I'm like, yo, how she just pulled that off? Right? <laughs> you know, but she did, you did it. And, and, and I hope you continue that. You know, I hope that, it, I know the quarantine lives, still call it the quarantine festival. Right? Yeah, because it, the actor is quarantined at home doing it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, and I'm thinking about that, and, and and that's what artists should do. We should be able to tell, and, and actually at the opening of, of We Did the Promise, you know, I, I, I gave you your props, you know, put it right up there. This was this was because, you know, this was inspired by Sharif Salam, you know, because you did. But we should be able to do that, you know, we should just... Yeah. I ain't going to rob your, your stuff, you know, and, and, and just come. Nah, let's say, yo, my sister inspired me. I'm, I'm not that big to be thinking, like, somebody can't yeah. inspire me because everything inspires artists, right? Right. We could be anywhere. Something can inspire something. This George Floyd inspired things in us. Stuff right. that we haven't even let out yet, right? So, so, so out of all that, you know, and, and so I, I kept sat back after you did it. And I said, well, what else can we do? I said, what else can be done to, mm -hmm. to, to you know, to, to complement or to in addition this, right? Yeah. And, and so I said, well, what about a play? And, and then, let me tell you, up front, it did not work. We did, like, the first read. That joke did not work. <laughs> Yo, that joke was an epic fail. It was because oh, I'm oh thinking. But, but that's the trial and error of art. The yeah. art is just like, we get the canvas, we get the paper, we type it, right? Nah, that sucks. We delete it. We, you know, mm -hmm. that's what we do. And we first read it, and I'm like, yo, this is too long. I said, we're going to kill it. I said, I was saying it sucked. It was so long. You know what I'm like? I'm like, yeah, this wasn't good. So I went, went back to the lab, and we just kind of tweaked it down to make it work. And that's yeah. what we did. And it's not a hidden formula. Like, I would share that and say, no, this is what I did because I would share that because I want us to be better. Yeah. This, you know what I'm saying? This is not, this is not ownership. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. And but, it's collaboration, um, right? Yeah, right, right. That's it's just, we have, to, we have to be artists that really connect and talk. And maybe, you know what? We don't have a space for us. Mm. Think about it. We don't have, a, like, a space that mm -hmm. we can just really come, like, I know... And on any, if it's even if it's weekly or once a month or something like that, but then that we show up as artists, you know, mm -hmm. what's that yeah. space on Chapel Street that people people do their work on? Uh, it's like a little hub. You, you know what I'm talking about? I think Rachel Harriman, oh. she started it at first, maybe. Is it on Orange or Chapel? 
it used to be on Chapel, like it's like right by the post, by the corner, almost there by uh, State Street. It's like a little. Oh yeah, I've seen you know, it. I've driven by it, but I don't yeah. know what. Yeah. So you can go in there and and like have space to work, and I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. But I think we need something like that for artists, like something where yeah. artists can come and get a good Wi-Fi connection. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And or, or be around. Sometimes we need to be an outside space where other artists are, so we can build and develop. And not necessarily yeah. just like having coffee, kicking it, and we could do that too. But really, let me go in here. Let me do some work. This is my workstation, yeah. so I can be creative. I think we right. need that more togetherness. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think we need to do more art, art, artist stuff together. You know, like remember the old Mike. Remember the science part back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, oh. and what's his name? Um, Gerald. Uh, Gerald. 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 Yeah. And and uh, Winchester, and there was um, what is the coffee house? The coffee house. It the coffee yep. house. There Open was up. a band, and yep. there was spoken word. There was all kinds of stuff going on in that space. So we used to have fun in there, you know. Yeah. Was, stuff used to happen there that would just like you have to be there to see yep. it happen because right. you can't really explain it any other way. And but we need more spaces like that where artists can just be, you know. And and then artists also, I think have to understand everything everything can't be about money up front yes People, yes we, 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 yes. we got to recognize that's real talk you know yes how much you know i do with people now to talk about how much you paying i'm like yo you got an agent i don't even want to work with with someone when they say things like that i'm like we're probably not going to jive yeah. because when if I, I have to build something in order to get contracts in order to or whatever you know um just speaking from a grassroots lens right right just on the yeah. grass, it's going to be gra a grassroots approach right. i've gotten to a place now where i'm able to you know you know work some things where i can get sponsorship and things like that and just have conversation with certain people where i think it makes sense for their business for them to work with us or whatever but yeah. Yeah. um starting out absolutely if everything was voluntary and you do it for the love of it and you hope something comes of it. I mean, a lot of not, uh, projects in the, uh, not, with nonprofits, they usually start with this idea like, oh, we have to serve this need. So yeah. people come together, serve the need, and then, that, then they're like, okay, let's get the funding now that you see that we can do this. Right, right, it's, it's right. It's very similar with the arts when you have, when you're grassroots. So going, going back when I said um, about Yo Street, uh, and I didn't even tell you, so the whole journey of that. So, and being a young, being young, and that's, we, we need guidance too. Like, you know, we need some good guidance. I, I dropped some bigger balls. Like I should have been, just the things I'm like, <laughs> I was just like, man. But, uh, so we did Yo Street on the street, right? All right, mm -hmm. fine. And then I got wind of this grant. All right, okay, writing a grant. So I wrote the grant and, I think I got like 2,500 bucks, right? And I was like, okay, fine. Let yeah. me tell you, I stretched that 2,500 to look like it was 5,000. That, I'm telling you, I, yeah. I stretched it and didn't take a dime. You know, it was, everything went into production, right? And everybody believed in the project. So because it was a community, the Big Ups, the Community Foundation, Community Foundation, they had back then, they had to see your project. So, mm. Lonnie Garris, who, who is a great man, used to be the principal at Hill House High School. He opened up his school, he opened up his auditorium for me to do that show. Wow. That little $2,500 show, right? And let me tell you, and it was, and, and I got to get better at writing smaller. You got to teach me this one. I got to get better at writing smaller casts. I can't have like <laughs> cast of Hamilton all the time, right? Right. But, yeah. but, <laughs> but uh, we, we, um, so we did the show and, and, and we did it for the love, period, right? Everybody did it for the love. And I'll never forget the team from Community Foundation, literally, I remember after the show, they came running down the aisle to catch me. And they were like, this is exactly what we're looking for. This is what we want. We want you to do this bigger, better, but I'll come meet with us. Let me tell you, I had another meeting with them. They're like, just tell us what you need. What would this be the dream? Yo, they cut a check, like, didn't blink. Like, I'm like, I think I undersold myself, right? <laughs> like, but I made this this show, 
you know, so he, it was like a major production, literally like we had, I had like six months to rewrite it, but I was able to get a legitimate set. I was able to get lights. I was able to get sound. The whole game, I had music behind it. So wow. that they really funded well and paid, you know, gave people money and stuff. And I'll never forget, we did the show. It was recorded by, I think, NPR, I think. NPR oh, came, wow. you know, one, of the, one of those radio shows that came and recorded yeah. it. Um, they had the 10th, 10th, 11th, 12th graders. And here's a great story behind this. 10th, 11th, and 12th graders, I think, were there. And I remember the set was, and I found the brother who was in the community who, knew, who had a good mind of construction. He built the set for me, and he just had that mind. Johnny White, you know, did great work, right? And so um, I remember when the curtains opened. You know that magic, right? You know that yeah. theater magic, right? When the curtains opened, this energy, and the audience just start applauding. Nothing happened. We just opened the curtain, and the, the audience went up in this huge applause because just the energy of the set, it was just incredible. And um, from there, we did that show. And uh, then there were some people, and this is where young, young, this is where, where we need to be counseled and get good, good counsel. I'm not even gonna say advice, good counsel. Um, Bitsy Clark, um, great woman. She, she believed in that so much. She took me down to New York. Citibank was interested in this show to play it, run it in Brooklyn right? Like BAM or something like that, right? And I remember sitting up in this high ride, I don't know what floor I was on, overlooking the city, all these execs at the table, throwing my little VCR tape of the play. We sat and watched it. They were talking and they were like, this is where youngness comes in. This is where they need to listen to us who've been around. They're like, you know, this is good, you know, but can you think you could shave a little off? It's a little too long. Can you kind of cut some parts out? What did the artist say? The young artist yeah, said, <laughs> <laughs> right. Yo, oh my God! The young, the young artist said, "No, because if you cut it out, it'll take take away from the true essence." And da, da, da. yo, sis, ask brother man that today. Yes, here's the scissors. <laughs> I will. <laughs> what you? <laughs> yo, I'm busy. What? Okay, this part gone. You know, right. and 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 so I blew the deal. I blew the deal being pat, being young and rightly so. We're artists, you know, mm -hmm. we're passionate. But then you, you, you learn, you learn mm -hmm. as you grow, as you get older, you learn, you learn like, okay, I understand this. And, um, yeah, sorry about that. And, and, uh, yeah. So, so, but fast forward 200 years later, I mean, this <laughs> downtown and you're talking about community. And I think this was the hugest, one of the best compliments I ever received. I'm sitting in this big circle. I can't even remember the meeting, but I'm downtown in this meeting and other people are there. And Aaron, Aaron Farris is there, right? Okay. In, in yeah. this meeting. So we're sitting there and I'm like number 20 or 18 in the circle. And you know, and you know, sometimes I hate go around and say something. And so yeah. I'm yeah, I'm sitting there like, okay, Steve, what are you gonna say? Um, what are you gonna say, Steve? So and Aaron was like number, I don't know, 10. So you know, mm -hmm. I'm half listening to people because I'm still trying to figure out in my head what I'm gonna say. Right. And Aaron says, uh, Steve, did you write a play called Yo Street? And so now this meeting, I don't even remember what the meeting was. And I remember like almost getting on guard, like, yo, why are you bringing that up? <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I was like, yo, why, where's this coming from? Why are you bringing me up? Yeah. Yeah, like I'm number 22. You, you know, you're on the other half right. side of the moon. Right. And he says, I'll never forget this. He says, I was this young little lost, like, you know, this white kid growing, going to all black school, Hill House really didn't know where I was, what I wanted to do. He said, I remember sitting in the audience and watching this play, Yo Street. Wow. He said, that, he said, that inspired me to do what I'm doing. Wow. And, that, and Aaron that, is amazing. Aaron is crazy amazing, He's right? Another New Haven treasure for those of y'all who don't know. Yeah. Amazing artist. So, so... You know, we do things, we got to understand what we do is not just because we, we may not even understand it all the time, you know, but there's a reason why we do what we do. And, and if, 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 right. if I could inspire anybody, oh, that's, that's, 
you, you can't put a price tag on that. You know, yeah. to know that, like, Aaron, you know, what, you know, little old me, I was just some young brother trying to <laughs> tell the world, <laughs> you know, yeah. but that was huge, you know, and then I thought about it. Now, who did Aaron touch? You see what I'm saying? So, so that's how we got to look at this. And, and you know what, I appreciate this conversation because, because it's really about people don't, don't always know the backdrop to the story. Yeah. You know, they just kind of see up front, but they don't, we don't know, like, there's some story behind all this, you know, yeah. and, and, it, and it's a beautiful thing. And, and um, when we can do that, and, and I always said, I hope that, I think I said to you one time before I said, I hope that, you know what, me and you're going to be like the ones that's going to blow it up and then we're going to show everybody how to do it or something like that, you know, just kind of yeah. because how we connect and what we do together, yeah. and what we've done. And I hope that, I still hope that on a larger scale, you yeah. know. Do this thing but yeah. community is important we need to be able to connect and pull together and trust that's that's the main thing you know trust. and grow yeah. and grow like the world is bigger than new haven like look you out there people know you heck you got actors from australia jive you know getting down with you <laughs> you know what i'm saying i only hope to get somebody from australia or something i'll do good if i could get you know Somewhere in Albany, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's what I'm saying. You you, you yeah. stretched out. And unfortunately, maybe that, and you know what I have to say? You inspired me to do that. So so the stories in the vault you did, the stories in the vault was like, I got like 20, 15 stories or something in, in, in the cabinet that, you know, I've been working on and just, you know, and, and just put it back in there. But you started putting your stuff out there and I started seeing the recognition you got. Like, you know, people like I'm recognizing you, but that inspired me to do it more. I would do it like once a year. I'm like, okay, I'll do this one thing. <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? But but you was doing it and I'm like, yo, sis, you and and I'm gonna say, and it wasn't even it wasn't we can't be jealous of each other. I was proud and happy for you. You know, and, and I was like, yo, sis is getting a thing. She is getting it, you know. <laughs> and so that inspired me. And actually I sent the script out to Chicago. And actually, not too long ago, and they, they responded back very favorably. And, you know, we'll see what happens with it. But the fact that somebody else is acknowledging it, not even, uh, you know, whatever happens with it, the fact that, you know what, I am good enough. Because sometimes as writers, we think, I don't know if I'm good enough. You know, right. and, you know right. we think, we get that. You know, we're not so super confident. At least I'm right. not. You know, I don't walk around like my, my ink don't run. You know, right. that, you know what I'm saying? Right. Right. You know, so it's like, no, you kind of wonder because you don't know how the people are going to receive it. You know how you got it, but you don't know if the audience is going to take it the way that you have. Right. And so, so when you put it out there, it's re and it's being vulnerable, right? Yeah. Like, we we are the most vulnerable. People. We put our our spirits out there, our heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and and that's that's daunting. That's daunting. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Definitely. And, um, one last thought or question, I guess, um, ever since all of this happened with the protests and George Floyd, and it, it, of course, George Floyd is not the only one we've been seeing this for a very long time, especially in New Haven, right? We, we've been seeing this. This is a, uh, a nationwide issue. It's a global issue. Um, as black artists, what is it? At, at this time, what do you think should happen? Like if you could snap your fingers and things look the way um, that you wanted, what would that be? What, what would that look like? And what do you think should happen? What, do you feel like this should motivate us to do something, something more, something different than what we've been doing? Because you know the theater scene is changing like overnight yes. <laughs> because of this too. Yeah, yeah. So as artists, you know, that's a really, man, I, I need to come back to you tomorrow with that answer because I need to, <laughs> I just I know, think okay. that one. Yeah. yeah. What we, I think every artist, every artist has been moved by this. Yes. You know, I, there's not an artist. I think if we could have a, a collection of, I don't know, traumatic or how, how the impact of, of the trauma that we've gone through in this particular period, Man, we would get so many volumes. It would be such a dense volume of, of work, 
from artists from every genre from I was talking to some friends of mine who are like photographers and visual artists and they were like sharing with me like yo I got this I want to do this this is like taking me in this whole nother place every genre has been impacted by this yeah um yeah. and what I think should happen what I would love for to see happen is that the theater world stops being stop being um or change their mindset for for artists of color i hope that yeah. this opens the door for us to have a a, a place and voice and, and say mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. i hope it opens opportunities because i hope they start looking and say well why is everybody around me white well why is every artist white why is broadway plays all white you know what i'm saying it's like i hope that right exactly like mm -hmm. you know art is supposed to be you know universal get every story and just mm -hmm. because and i hope that they start respecting our stories yes you know that's what i hope just respect us as artists and unfortunately you had an incident when you did you wanted to do uh black voices yo mm -hmm. that that bothered me that bothered me it was so annoying yeah i you know just so people know so i just put up an ad you know just like a, a promo and i boosted it on facebook you know saying hey um uh, if any, we would like to raise sponsorship, you know, or just money funds to sponsor uh, honoring Black Voices Round Ten, which is this round that right, we're getting yeah, ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, you know, so here's my email. If you want to, you know, send me an email, you can go to the website or just you know make single donations or whatever. I hit boost. The minute I hit boost, I got all of this. Flat and actually, it took a minute for the ad to get approved, which is strange because I had to hit it twice and they said reject, reject. And I was like, That's weird. Well, that's weird. Okay, yeah. so then the third time I hit it, it went through, but then all of these people were putting all voices matter, all lives matter. Um, blocked, black, I'm reporting you. Uh, I'm so sick of black lives matter. I'm so sick of black people. And I was just like, This is crazy. This is, and it was scary because people, I don't, there was like a little post with like fire on it. I'm like, what are you trying to say? Like they were having like fire, just a bunch of like fire flames, but it wasn't like, oh, that's fire. You know, it was right, like, right. they was talking about like message. You, you trying to send me a message? Oh no. So I was like, okay, this is crazy. So that's why I put that post. Like, I can't believe, you know, here we are in 2020 that people would actually want to discourage. What is it to you? You don't have to watch it if you don't want to. Right, 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 right. You don't have to. You don't have to support it if you don't want to. But why knock somebody else for, you know, wanting to have their voice elevated? Wanting to have black people's voices elevated. You're, you're good with it with, with our music. You're good with it with everything else we got going on, with our talent, with everything else. But in this moment in time, the world is upset. The world is angry because of this police brutality and they're sick of it. I want to do something to honor black voices using the medium that I'm in. You have a problem with it? That, that to me was so disgusting. Yeah. You know, and yeah. it, people really do want to keep you quiet. You know, it's crazy. I know. And, and yeah, that, that, but it lets you know how deep seated this is even in the arts, right? Oh, yes. oh and, yes. And 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 I hope that we can call it what it is because artists, we're supposed to we should be speaking the truths of what goes on around us. Right? Yeah. And and um and our what we have to say should should actually be communicated through our art. Mm -hmm. uh, and and what I see that goes on um if if that doesn't change, if the entertainment industry, industry, if the theater industry does not change and start uh, really opening their doors, then you know what? We have learned nothing and we are still fighting that fight. And then you know what? At the end of the day, maybe, you know what? Maybe we don't need them. You know, I'm gonna just like say, maybe we just need I don't to- feel like we do. We have yeah. something valuable to bring to the marketplace. Right. right. So we need right. to build our own stuff. Build and our own you stuff. You know, we talk about that a lot. We need to just build our own stuff. I'm not trying to get into nobody's club. I'm not trying to, you know, follow somebody else's rules and tell white stories. I'm not doing it. Right, right. Why right. would I do that if that's not who I am? Right? I'm not going to keep doing that. Very annoying, not doing it. Like, yeah. and 
you know, it, it's at that point, you know, we both have started our, our, you know, theater companies our you know, doing things with our writing and being creative right. with it. But it's time to get a building, you know, it's time to, you yeah. know, have, I feel like it's, t it's even more so time to create work specific for people that represent us, that look like us, that have our experiences yeah. and bring that to the marketplace. And tell you our know? story, and tell our yeah. story. You know, and and, su and support our stories, right? Exactly. Why why yeah. can't we why can't we create a, a writers room with with concepts and we all just write? We all we're all part. We all like got stock in it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like we right. come up with right. a concept and we all have stock in it, and we put it out there and see. You know why couldn't we create a, a series? You know mm -hmm. why couldn't we do that? You know why couldn't we create that? There's enough creatives around. There's enough people who are in in film and videography and all that stuff. Why couldn't they, why couldn't we, we create a writer's room and say, you know what, we're going to create our own thing and we're going to film it and we're going to mm -hmm. shoot it. And, and right. we, we can think tank this out. And, and, you know, I think it's possible. You know, maybe it is time if they, yeah, we, we don't, yeah. We, don't need, we don't need that drama. No. Know? And also too, I think, um, not, not all artists are alike. Like we're not, we don't have to be Tyler Perry. Like that's not, <laughs> you know, right, right, um, right. and we can, we can still create amazing, beautiful work to bring to the marketplace. That's high quality. That's, um, true. That's genuine to, to who we are and what we represent. Um, I think there's definitely a space for that. It is, it is. And, and I also think we need to, we need to be able to educate and lift up our, our people when it comes to what, how and what we write. Right. Um, you know, I, I think that sometimes we're just giving garbage so much that we don't know good stuff when it comes by, you know, and I, <laughs> and I, and I blame the media for that. I blame the media for that. I blame the media for, for um, giving, putting out so much trash that we, we, you know, it's like you give people and not knocking apples, I like apples. But if you get people apples all the time, but they don't know they're pineapples and peaches, well, all they're gonna want, all they know is apples, right? Right. right. But, right. but there's an array to what we do. There, we have a, a cornucopia of, of talent that, mm -hmm. that needs to be shown and, and we need to be able to teach that. We need, to, we need our presence in theater alone needs to be up like 500 notches, you know? Right, it, right, and I think the, um the original approach to that was, oh, well, let's just have colorblind casting or let's just, let's, let's pepper in some people of color and, you know, mix them into these white stories. Yeah. I understood why, you know, in some ways, I guess, you know, it's, it's a way of inclusion, but this is where I feel like, well, we're, we're in a different space now where it's like, okay, we need to see black stories. That's what we need to see. We need to see stories about people of color, indigenous people. We need to see that. That's what we, that's what we're craving. That's what's missing. It's not about always wanting to be in your club. We don't want, we don't want that anymore. You know, I feel like, well, I should, maybe I should speak for myself because I no, think there no, are some people that want that. That's not me. It's not me either. Right. <laughs> it's not me either. It's not us, right. And so, you know, I think that, you know, this conversation is good. It's good for people to see what we're thinking, yeah. you know, and um, instead of always deciding for us, you know, what, what, do, what do black people want? How do we get more black people in our theater? How, how, how do, well, first of all, <laughs> until you have black stories, you know, why would we want to come? That's the question. Yeah, yeah right. And it's not always a struggle story. It's, it's not, not always a struggle. A it's not, you know, there's, it's just, it's no different than anybody else's culture that has an array of experiences, right? Oh, man. We have weddings, we have funerals, That's we it. have births, we have, right? <laughs> right. Why, why does it always have to be the slave story, the struggle story? Now, those have a place for us, too, because that's history. We need to learn from this. We need to right. see. Right. But that's not, that's not the only thing. Right. Right. We're and just then, it, then the question is, well, what, what are we entertained by? Are we only entertained by our struggle stories? Now that's a problem. Right. right? <laughs> <laughs>
So. That is. Yeah, we were there. There's so much. That's why I said our, our audience, we have to lift our own people up when it comes to our audience and what we know we want to see. Right? right. You know, because there's, like you said, there's so much to us. We're all not, we're all not thugs. We're all not, you know, prostitutes. We're all not on on state assistance we're all not you know it's like i'm I, and I'm, honestly, I'm tired of hollywood making them you know i'm tired it's like yo how about just tell a story you know let's how about yeah. black love you know we do that right. you know what i'm saying right. we do that and you know what and we're not gonna rob the bank and kill somebody and make it a love story you know what i'm saying right. not, you know, so how about we just a loving story right. about people we do right. do that. We do do Either that. Way, does a beautiful job. Of oh that. man, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we need to see more, man. You know, we know we need to see more that tells the story of of of, of my my of black people who are maybe retiring. You know, when you if I can still see Robert De Niro on screen, then that means I could see a story. And, and I love Robert De Niro, right? But you, I would like to see more older black people. You know, stories. Like it's almost like in, in the entertainment industry now. After a certain age, you don't see black actors anymore, right? <laughs> but you still see white old actors, right? Come back. You see right. Meryl Streep, right? You you see you see you see uh, Meryl Streep. You see Robert De Niro. You see you know the only but all we got now is who? My Samuel man, L. Jackson and Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman. <laughs> <laughs> Morgan Freeman. You know what I'm saying? Denzel, yeah. And, and, and we got to put Denzel in there now, right? You sure. know what I'm saying? So, and then you don't know, even see Denzel really acting much too much. It's like once in the blue moon. Yeah. I'm like, wait a minute. If everybody else could still tell stories at different ages, what do you mean? We don't have stories? Seriously. I don't know. So yeah, black, black stories. We yeah. need to push. We need to push and we need to collaborate. We need to lock together artists of color. We need to really do our thing together and just say, look, we'll do it. You know, we need our own venue, mm -hmm. you know? Definitely need mm -hmm. our own venue, and yeah. uh, so our stuff can be seen. And 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 because if they don't want us in, by action and by and historically, mm -hmm. you know, don't 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 talk about it now. You know what can we do? Well, what you've been what doing? What you can this do is put some dollars. That's it. That's where we are now. It's not anymore about inclusion. It's not about any of that. Put some dollars down. Inclusion but is an illusion. Some venues. Make spaces. Um, very specific to us and, and um, our experiences because there is value to, uh, for that in the marketplace. Yeah, you know, yeah. people are missing a big thing because of their stuff. Right, they're, they're missing the bigger possibilities. Right, right, right. Economically, it would actually be very good for everybody to be on board with supporting uh, black art. That's what it has. If to everybody was on board. Are you kidding me? That would be a huge boost to the economy. Yep. I'm not talking about pimping our stuff. There I'm talking go. about celebrating, celebrating our stuff our and stuff putting some with. dollars down for what we right. do. Right, right. Not, not, not like for example, we know black films, right? Black films, they they'll give black filmmakers what a a million dollar budget, and it's been proven. They give a million dollar budget, but the movie makes twenty seven million. Right. How many times has that happened? We could go back in the books and pull pull the tape and so see. Much exploiting. Right. Yeah. But I'm like, so you make all this money and only give us a million, but you'll give a sub movie from a, to a white producer. Oh, we'll give him a budget of thirty million. I'm like, you got thirty million dollars to do this, and you give Sharice a million. That's the same difference. It's the same difference of what happens out here. You know, I had to send somebody. Yeah, well, I'm not even going to get into that. I'm going to leave that one alone. <laughs> it's just, it's, 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 it's messed up, you know, and, and inclusion can sometimes be an illusion. Yes. Oh, that's a yeah. title, Steve. No. Inclusion no. It can be an illusion. Right, right. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, yeah. And we have to be careful about that, you know. Yeah. And, and, and I'm tired of the semantics. Oh, my God. I hear a lot of semantics now. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. You know, this is this is why I say, okay. Well, so what does that do for Black people? You know, let, let's just call it for what it is. You right. know what I mean? All, and I think that that's why before this George Floyd thing happened, people were just like right here, right on the. Okay, yeah, we want to. You know, we're diverse. We want to support diversity. We want to. 
blah, blah, blah. Then this happened. It's like, okay, let's let's have a real conversation. <laughs> you know, like, let's have a real conversation. Yeah. For black people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and this is a 400 year old problem. This is not new. It's not. It's a 400 year old problem. You know, and so until we get to the root of that, until we, until we start digging into that and just saying, you know what, we need to put some dollars down for black people Period. to continue yeah. to build their businesses and their art. Yeah. Then, yeah. then we're going to keep having these right. issues. Right. Don't, I don't, don't change a name. Don't take a statue down. I, you right. know, as far as I'm concerned, nah, that's just, those are all smoke and mirrors. You know, I'm like, it's smoke and mirrors for me. I'm like, because let, in, in, in three months, you're going to be back to normal. So, right. so I, don't care, I don't care what you name, change the name of the street, change the name of a building, take something down. If you're not doing anything internally, if you're not really bringing us in, if you're not mm -hmm. bringing us in at the table, if you, and mm -hmm. if you really want to say I'm sorry, then you know what? Sorry and put money into it. Dismantle your systems like how you did for COVID. There you go. Okay. Right. Dismantle them and change them and put the put people of color and black people in particular on your management teams. Yes. Yes. Your directing teams. Period. Right. Period. Stop Period. with the games. Yeah. Not no Stop front. with the games. Stop with the moving the resumes. <sighs> Stop with the, you know, putting, you know, having all white teams and whatnot who make decisions over black people. Stop doing that. Because what you're doing is you're recreating slavery. That, that's all. It's the same that's model. All. It's the Stop. same model. I don't know. If they, I don't know. I hope we can get there. I hope. I hope people can change it. But you know, we can say it, but it just has to happen. You know what I'm saying? And and that's where right. that's where my frustration as an artist comes in, and as even a, as a black person, you know, it's like, yeah, I see what you're doing, you know, but is it real? Is it really <laughs> real? You know, because I know yeah. you, you know, and all of a sudden y'all pouring money into the Nah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, a lot I'm of skeptical. game plan. A lot, a lot of game plan. plan. Yep. Yeah, Smart and games. it's not, and I think too, you know, just and I I know we got to wrap up because of time, yeah. but just another point because you and I both work in for nonprofit organizations. Yeah. Right, and that's something that I've always admired about you is that your heart is really for the community, like really, really for the community, like making sure people are well holistically all the way around, not just, you know, with the arts, but like, you know, that their, their well being is straight. And right. um, very specifically, I've seen you working with black and brown people and, you know, through the different organizations you have worked for um, myself as well. And I think that th that area of the, of government and, you know, local government or whatever, um, being a nonprofit world, that's another place where really start. If all of these companies are being run by by white people and they're saying that they're serving black people and people of color or what they call disadvantaged and minorities, you know, these are words we need to retire, but you know, that's what they put in their grant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> um, so that within itself, I feel like is where a, a change needs to begin. What do you think about that? No, no, absolutely. Um, and because really, it's almost that white savior thing, right? You know, and, and, and that's what, you, you, when you start looking, if you can look around you and you see everybody look like you, well, you know what it is? A fish don't know water, right? Mm. You mm. know, fish, fish, you say, hey, how's the water? Fish like, what water? You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> it's, like, so it's like, you know, when you, everything around you is white, you, you don't see anything else. Mm -hmm. So you, you don't even recognize it. So, and I, I think the disruption and the disturbance has to come. The agitation has to come. We have to agitate that. We have to push it. We need to be vocal about it. I mean, because before, if you said, use the angry black woman, right? If I, if <laughs> right. You remember, because then. Before George Floyd, before this episode, this was like a breaking point, right? Everybody, because of COVID, people don't have other distractions. A friend of mine said that this weekend, and I was like, that's it. That's yeah. what it is. It would have been another black death. It would have been, oh, isn't that sad? Okay, moving on. You know, that's like, that's it. Even I, I, though, I, yeah. No, no, go I was just going to say, you know, in, in these organizations, they really try to act like this is business as per usual, which I recently wrote a play about that. I wrote a short play called This Is Not Business As Per Usual, you. right? Good for you. <laughs> so yeah, uh, Greg Allen out in Boston is uh, putting together, um, you know, some, 
he's going to be showing these short plays. So I'll keep you posted on that. But um, that's what's happening. That's the tone. And prior to this happening and everybody being home and being really like seeing this intensely on TV, this, this slow, tragic death, and that they were moved to action prior to this, it was like, oh, no, you can't speak on these things. You know, you can't because you would definitely be labeled the angry black person. Why do you have a chip right. on your shoulder? Oh, yeah. What's wrong? What's wrong? You know, What's yeah, wrong? Th this is you wrong. Have an attitude. You have an attitude. Fix your face. <laughs> right. They don't understand that. They, they would never understand that de the, the death of a thousand cuts. They will never understand the, mm. the micro cuts that we've just been getting for, for my, my lifetime, my father's lifetime, his mother's, my grandmother's lifetime, this just didn't stop. You yeah. know, when I look at my nine, when I look at the weathered face of my 90 year old aunt, mm. and to know that my 90 year old aunt has to watch something like this, which in her almost 100 years of living, she's been seeing before. Is that the thanks you give to someone who lived that long? And, and that's crazy. Mm. That's crazy when we start thinking about that. It hurts me. I think yeah. about them. I'm like, no, oh, I couldn't do no better. So y'all can at least see a better something. Right, and don't right. give me that Barack Obama stuff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> don't give me that because that that was still smoking mirrors, right? right. Because they, they didn't allow him to do what he has to do, and and so that's right. still the same thing. So so y'all didn't do anything. Oh, we gave y'all him. Yeah, this is not this is. This is gonna make me cuss, and I was that I hadn't done it yet. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah, we got we got to keep fighting. At the end of the day, you know, and our heart has, still has to be for people. I always be for the people, no matter where I go. You know, up down, it's got to be. I always be for the people. It'll, it'll mm -hmm. be, you know. Yeah, that's your heart, Steve. That is definitely your heart. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, sis. Uh -oh. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. Um, you can see Steve's work on uh, the first round of the Quit Quarantine Festival because, of course, when I first had this idea, right, one of the first people I called was Steve. <laughs> <laughs> so he, uh, he wrote three pieces in that festival, and um, they were wonderful. And so if you have some time, check it out, round one of the Quit Quarantine Play Festival. We are now on round 10, honoring Black voices. We've got a dope team. I'm really excited about it. Um, and we have sponsorship for this round. So community folks have donated and we got very, very specific sponsorship from um, the Greater, uh, the Arts Council of Greater New Haven, uh, Bergamos Community Theater and Coalescence Theater out of Bloomington, Illinois. So I'm really excited about that. Good. I'm on their yeah. advisory board. So shout yeah. out to Don Chandler. That post about how disheartening it was that somebody could actually, you know, that people would get on and discourage black voices. He said, Oh, Koala Sense is behind you. <laughs> and he and he put, you know, he made sure he sent me, you know, some things that will help us with the sponsorship of this round and we're good to go. So um up. thank you, Don, for that. That's I really appreciate up. it. That's what's up. Yeah. So um <laughs> So thank you again, Steve, for all you do. Thank you, sis. You deserve the honor. Thank you me. are amazing. Thank you me. are uh, <laughs> super talented. You know, like if you ever went once COVID is over and you can everyone can get in the theater, please go and see Steve's play. If you ever see his name around Facebook and his, you know, with his flyers, <laughs> yeah. you know, please see his plays. Yeah. Um, he's a wonderful, wonderful um, New Haven uh, grassroots person supporter, believer in the arts, believer in all things good for all people. So all the people. Power to all the people. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sis. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. All right. All right.